guest now is Nathan Runkle. Uh, he's the executive director for Mercy for Animals. Um, he uh, is a person we've covered on the show before. I'll explain that in a second. But first, Nathan, welcome to the Young Turks. Thank you so much for having me. Now, we appreciate you coming on. Uh, now, Nathan, you're the one who did, or your organization is, uh, the one who did the video of the little chicks being slaughtered. Uh, is that right? That's right. Yeah, we uh, released a video last week shot inside the world's largest egg industry hatchery, which documented a standard but shocking practice that few consumers know about, which is all of the male chicks, which are useless to the egg industry because they are males and they won't produce eggs and they're of a breed that won't grow large or fast enough to be raised profitably for meat, um, all of these chicks being disposed of by being gr dropped while still alive into a grinding machine and having their bodies torn apart by a high-pressure macerator. Mm -hmm. Now, how did you guys shoot that video? Who, who went in and, uh, and how was it shot? We have a number of uh, field investigators, and our investigator gained employment at the facility and then went to work wired with a pinhole-sized hidden camera each day and documented conditions that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, you just went and applied for, that person applied for a job, they didn't know any better, and then you do the little camera, boom, boom, boom. Uh, now, was that hatchery any worse than other hatcheries, or you just picked that hatchery because they're one of the largest and just to show how things normally operate? Yeah, this is the first hatchery investigation that, that we have done. This facility was selected because it is the world's largest. And the cruelty that we documented, in addition to live animals being ground up, just extremely violent handling of the animals, birds being scalded alive through wash cycles, uh, birds being mutilated without painkillers, um, all of these sort of things are standard procedure in ha hatchery operations. Uh, so we believe that this takes place ac across the country. And when we released this investigation, the egg industry itself came forward and said that, that all of these abuses um, that we uncovered were considered standard and acceptable procedures. Nathan, some people would argue that, um, you know, dropping those uh, baby chicks into the grinder is the most humane way to, uh, I guess, get rid of them, if that's, you know, the proper way to phrase it. Um, what would you say to that? Well, first of all, I have to. I think we have to ask ourselves, you know, if these were puppies or kittens that were being dropped into grinding machines, would we find them acceptable? But I also think we have to step back a little bit further and ask ourselves if it's acceptable for over 200 million uh, male chicks to to be killed in this method every year, just so we can have cheap eggs. And the disposal of the male chicks is not the only uh, cruelty that was documented during this investigation. The day-to-day -day operations of how these animals are, are sorted, there's workers called sexers, and their job is to sort the males from the females. They take these birds by their wings and they roughly throw them into chutes. These animals have their beaks mutilated with lasers um, so that they won't injure each other when they're kept in close confinement. So the, this hatchery environment is so far removed from the natural setting that these animals should be raised under. Um, these animals never even get to meet their mothers. They um, are brought up in an environment filled with stress and noise and cruel handling. So there right. is a larger issue here as well. And Nathan, I hear you on that. We're showing you the uh, audience a video now, and we covered the story before, so I get that. But here are the, the tougher questions in my mind. One, so what are we supposed to do with the 200 million male chicks, which we can't eat or, or do anything else with? I mean, where do you put them? And, and I just flat out don't know the answer to that. What's, what's your suggestion? Well, our organization advocates a vegan diet, people reducing or eliminating eggs from their diet completely, and that's because this is an issue in both caged and cage-free egg production. These chicks are considered a byproduct, and this is sort of the dirty secret of the egg industry, and I think that that's why so many people were really shocked by this investigation because people just had no idea that this is par for the course, and this abuse right. goes hand-in-hand hand with the egg industry. Right, Nathan, I got you, but how about in the real world? <laughs> well, a adopting a vegan diet is a very practical solution. We see more and more people doing it every year. It's never been easier. So it's, it's simply a matter of, of reducing uh, know, or eliminating Nathan, this product. I, I know, Nathan. Look, I'm not arguing against it, right? And I have friends who are vegans. God bless. Go forward, right? But 
you know that the world is not going to magically turn vegan overnight. So what do we do in the meanwhile? Okay, that's another way of phrasing it. Well, I think that we continue to have this this problem on our hands is is really the solution. I mean, this is so you sort of a having, radical problem. So you have whether you don't have a solution for what to do with the two hundred million male chicks other than stop eating eggs. Well, I, we think that that's the very best thing that people can do, absolutely, because this is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of the cruelty of the egg industry. That being said, there there is some research being done in Australia by the egg industry to figure out how they can breed only female chicks so they don't have uh, male chicks at all. Now, if the egg industry was serious about addressing this issue, they could certainly be putting more resources into this. They spent almost $10 million last year in California to defeat a very modest ballot initiative that would simply give uh, chickens that are used for egg production enough space to spread their wings. So the egg industry could certainly be doing more to address this issue as well. All right. Now, you mentioned what if it was cats or dogs, people would be outraged, right? Well, in fact, you'd be put in jail, as Michael Vick is uh, eminently aware, right? Uh, but then there's the flip side to that, Nathan, uh, which is uh, how about rats? I mean, they're not as cute as chicks, but we murder them endlessly. Uh, and in terrible and inhumane ways. Absolutely. We believe that all animals, no matter how cute or cuddly they are, deserve protection from egregious abuse. And the reality is that farmed animals, especially chickens, have no federal protection during their lives on the farm, during transport, at hatcheries, and for birds, not even at the slaughterhouse. So right now there is just a huge loophole that you could drive a semi through in our legal situation when it comes to the lack of protection for these animals. So we okay, think that but, but both on a federal and state level, more needs to be done to protect these right, animals. Right, but, but we got to kill the rats, don't we, Nathan? I guess I'm not sure which rats you're talking about. The ones that are unsanitary, the ones that get in your kitchen, the ones that are all over the cities, the ones that carry disease? Well, you know, I think I think you've got to address that on a case by case basis. If you've got a rat infestation in your house, you you may have food that you're leaving out or or hole somewhere, and you should try to address the root of the problem. But you know, we're not talking about that here. We're talking about purposely breeding and killing 200 million male chicks every single year by throwing them alive into grinders. It, give me a middle ground because I think a lot of people listening are thinking. Yeah, look, I'm I'm not going to turn vegan, right? It just realistically, some are, and you're reaching those people, and you're doing a good job of reaching those people. And I, and Nathan's group is Mercy for Animals, and he's the executive director. Uh, but give us something where we can live with ourselves a little bit, but but while going towards a better goal and a better world. What what's yeah. is there any middle ground course here? Yeah, absolutely. There's there's a lot of middle ground, and I think that, that most people, no matter where you're coming from um, on the spectrum of this issue, can agree that the way in which we treat the vast majority of farmed animals, and there's over 9 billion cows, pigs, and chickens that we kill every year in this country, is absolutely appalling and not something that we should be allowing in any civilized society. So I think the middle ground here is that we should definitely be supporting legislation on a federal and state level that would give these animals at least some basic protection. The vast majority of animals that are raised on factory farms can't even spread their limbs. They can't even turn around or engage in natural behaviors. And this is something that is really a shame. And we saw voters in California last year overwhelmingly pass Proposition 2, which would give farmed animals some basic freedom of movement. And really, we need to vote with our consumer dollars. The reason that animals are being confined and slaughtered in this way is because of people's demand for cheap meat, dairy, and egg products. So whether it's going vegan or simply being aware and conscious of the source of your meat, dairy, and eggs, we can use our purchasing dollars to prevent a lot of needless animal suffering. All right. I like that middle ground because I, I think purchasing power is a smart, logical, uh, free market way of doing it. And I voted for Prop 2, so I feel a little better about myself. All right. Now, Anna's got one more question for you. When your organization did the undercover uh, hatchery investigation, did the sexers have any type of remorse as they were, you know, throwing these baby chickens around? And when they were throwing them into the grinders, did they show any emotion at all, or were they just 100% fine with it? You know, it's, it's interesting that you asked that because our investigator did have a conversation with one of the individuals that worked as a sexer, and she told him that she just has learned to not think about 
the fact that those chicks are, are being sent to the grinder. And we find that time and time again with people that work at slaughterhouses is they're oftentimes sort of victims of these um, situations as well where they're put in really emotionally traumatic situations where they're forced to engage in cruel practices that really run against their, their moral ground as well. So um, they've sort of learned to tune it out and just do their, their job as they're instructed. All right, Nathan Runkle, Executive Director of Mercy for Animals. Uh, I'll tell you what, no matter what anybody thinks of it, uh, I think it's very important to shine a light on what's happening so that we can make informed decisions, whether we are vegan or not vegan, uh, about where the food is actually coming from. And if you put light on that, I think that's always a good thing. So thanks so much for joining us, Nathan. Absolutely. Thank you.